Hey there, how many times have you been looking at the screen and you've wondered, what exactly am I going to write in here? So, is there a better way to handle this use case? Can I do anything to make this whole process of writing issues or pull requests a little bit more structured and a little bit simpler so I don't have to remind myself what are the most crucial things that I should discuss when I write an issue or when I open a pull request? Well, the good news is that using Pixie Bricks, I can put together a couple of bricks that will help me to speed up this process. So to do that, let's see what bricks I need to get that done. So I decided where I'm going to create a context menu. That's basically when I click anywhere on the page, it's going to show up here in my menu. And I will then show a model that will pop up. And this model will basically allow the user to select between either an issue template, a pull request template, or maybe some other kind of template that you can decide. Once I've done my selection from the dropdown, I will send this data to the GQ brick, which will transform the data and return the template. The template will then be taken and it will be sent over to the page into the text field area. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, I'm going to open the Pixie Bricks page editor. So I will just right click on the page, click inspect, and then go to Pixie Bricks. Then I will go ahead and go and create a context menu. I'm going to create a new context menu, extension name. I'm just going to call it GitHub template. Uh, just going to copy this line here, GitHub template. And uh, actually, let's call it template with an S. Everything looks good. I'm not going to touch anything else here. I'm just going to go ahead, save this first brick, and then I'm going to add a second brick. The second thing I'm going to do is show a model. So I want the user to be able to select something here. Uh, so I'm going to call it uh, templates as a form title. In the description, I'm going to have uh, select a template from the drop down. Uh, so here, this is an interesting one because I'm going to have to give a, a name to a field that will basically gather or rather hold to the value selected from the drop down. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to call this one template. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to give this a, a label. As you can see here on the right hand side, I'm going to just uh, say pick one like that. And then the field description. I'm just going to copy a line that I had here. Here we go. Choose a template to use on this page. The input type, like I kind of gave away, it's going to be a drop down. It's going to have, I would say, three options. My first option is a template for a pull request. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. And I'm also going to give the default value uh, as a pull request. The second one is an issue template. And then I will have a third one, like a blank one, that I can just customize, customize later on. I'm going to make that a required field, make sure it's cancelable. And I also want to change the submit button text to be generate template. And uh, I'm going to save this just so I don't lose it. I'm going to make sure that the output of this form, uh, of this model is uh, called form, which is a good name enough for me. Uh, that works. The hardest part of writing um, code is naming variables. And then the third thing I want to do is I want to use a kind of a logic brick. So what, what this is going to do is going to take whatever value I specified from the dropdown and it's going to return something here to for me to use. So this is a pretty complicated JQ syntax. I'm just going to copy it and then I'm going to go over it just to uh, explain it a little bit. So the first thing we're doing here is we're saying, you know, take the data from uh, the output from the previous step, which is form, and then pipe it and do some conditional logic. So if the template, and remember template is the name that we given to the, um, to the output here of, uh, the value, right? So the value, it's actually form.template. So, so if the, the, the entry template is pull request, what we're going to do is we're going to return all of this data up to here. Another one is, on the other hand, if 
the template is an issue, then we're going to return this data up to here. And then instead, if I select the template to be blank, my third option, I'm just going to return one string. And then if nothing is selected, just, uh, you know, else empty end, like terminate GQ and return empty. And uh, everything else looks pretty good. I'm not going to specify a data input as I'm going to use form like I specified. And that's pretty much it. I will save this step. Next, I will go ahead and create my last brick into this chain of bricks. And uh, this is basically the ability to take the logic and the template and piping all of that inside the text area field inside of the GitHub UI. So to do that, I'm going to need another brick. And to do this one, it's going to be called the brick that I need is the set input value. So I'm going to add this brick. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an input. So I'm going to add an item. I'm going to select in a, a part of the page where I want these, uh, the, the, the data returned from JQ, the JQ brick to be inserted. So I know this is the text area element. So I'm just going to write text area here. And then the value that I want to use is basically anything returned from the previous brick. brick. So it's like at transformed. This brick here does not have an output. It's just going to execute and insert the value of transform inside text area. So I'm going to do that and save this. So we're pretty much done. Now I'm going to go ahead and test and see if this works. I'm going to basically, because this was a context menu activation, I'm going to right click and I can see that indeed there is an entry in my context menu, GitHub templates. I'm going to click that. Pixie Bricks is going to show me the model. I'm going to select the template from the drop down. This is not a pull request, it's an issue. So let's select issue and click the button to generate the template. And what I expect is a markdown template to be entered into the text area here on this page. And voila. And just like that, it worked. Now I can use the same process on any other website where there's similar use cases. I can also create more templates on GitHub and just add them to the dropdown and then edit the JQ logic to return them. Um, this is going to save me a lot of time and give me a little bit more clarity in my mind. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you get stuck, let me know in the comments or feel free to navigate to our forums. I put a link to our forums in the description of this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.